and welcome back to Get Graphics. This time we're going to look at a uh, fairly simple, slightly old school uh, Sony radio, AM, FM radio. You can see it here, basic idea, it's a cuboid with some rounded corners. Uh, that, that's the fairly simple form of it and the simplest way to get started for an orthographic view would be to draw around it. And in this case we're going to go for the elevation. You can start just lightly penciling, although in ink, around the outline of the object and highlighting any important features on the outside of that so we can carry these sizes through. So what have we got now then? We've got the, the, the drawing will speed up quite a bit as we go through this because it took the best part of about 50 minutes the full demonstration and we'll show you this in about 15 minutes. So you can see the basic construction. We'd normally turn the page to draw vertical lines but because of the camera rig kind of limited what I can do at the moment. Uh, I'm all the time looking at the outside. Now remember this is just the casing. We're not looking at any detail at the internals, the wiring, the circuit boards, how that dial moves along, the red bit moves along. We're not doing a detailed thematic presentation type of thing. We're just looking at the, the outside of the box. So some detail going in, proportions during the end elevation. Same idea, just lined up and uh, we get the basic rectangle. It's a little bit asymmetric, this thing. The back is thicker, tapers off. Um, so it's not quite a, a standard cuboid. So we're trying to get that end elevation and projecting positions across from the uh, elevation, the left-hand view to the right-hand side. Again, speed it up, you can see some of the features getting added in, the button. There are some uh, little doors in the back which are, are difficult to see, but you can see them from that end elevation. The plan, exactly the same idea, but lined up directly above. We're doing this in third angle projection. So, just uh, looking at the, some of the detailing in the plan, looking at the object. It's off camera at the moment, but we're looking at the object to, to build this up. Now, although this is sketching, we put a ruler in here just to tidy a few lines up. Uh, firming in either with the same pen or you can move up to a slightly thicker type of pen and just making sure things line up between one view and the next. Again we're on to high speed, turboed this up a little bit. Uh, the, the top view, um, vertical lines, horizontal lines, it's a little bit old school this but if you're working with a pen try and work away from the wet edge. In other words, know what I did there but working from right to left moving the, the ruler or straight edge uh, along so you don't smudge um, the ink by going back over the line you've just drawn. As I say, it's a little bit old school, certainly done in drawing boards years ago, and it, it's a good wee habit to keep. So looking at the object, firming in the outline, firming in some of the features from those early construction lines, putting the curves on the corner, the detail of the aerials would be seen, the, the tuning dial or, or a bar. Looking how the object actually closes in the break line between the two halves, and it's actually a staggered brake line round by that uh, tuning uh, wheel on the side. Detail in the back, again, you're not seeing it too clearly on the object, but uh, from the viewer's point of view, looking right down the edge of the material to, to see the, the, the basic construction. Little details like the slopes at the side, the little hatch at the back where the batteries go in, um, and cleaning up edges. The, the top itself is a, is a very simple view, uh, although if you look at the ob actual object, you can see some curving, sloping surfaces. That's the aerial going in with a little hinge mechanism on the top. I've already found in a, an outline of where the the, uh, the logo goes, but the, the, the pattern of holes have been drawn by a series of little C-shapes to suggest holes. Um, and then we're going to look at the darker area within that pattern, that uh, array of uh, holes. Some of them go right the way through with the speaker at the back. So we're just looking at the which ones of the the holes um, actually go right through and actually appear as a circular darkness, for want of a better phrase, within the uh, the grid, within the array. Just using a, a grey marker at the moment, and uh, these will go a couple of times over just to try and make the holes appear like holes, as opposed to little depressions, little uh, craters if you like. It should build up uh, over time. Might not get the perfect circle. Uh, we sketched a circle to get an idea of this sort of basic layout. Um, the holes of the C shapes were actually done a little cheat. We put the, the uh, radio underneath and rubbed the pencil over the top to pick up the, the, the pattern through the paper. Okay, you recognise a change in pens. We moved on to a Sharpie and we're uh, again trying to work with this wet edge type idea working from right to left. Um, using the straight edge, speeding up again and uh, firming in the outline. outline. Maybe a couple of shadow lines will go in here as well. 
swapping over now to this top line and then some verticals, sorry, some horizontal lines. And again, it just reinforces the, the overall form of the object and the alignment of the views from the elevation, the plan and the end elevation. Now we've no sectional views, we've no exploded views. This is just getting the, the ball rolling, if you like. Easy start by drawing around the object itself. Easier to see, uh, easier to get the proportions right. And we've not actually measured anything at all at this stage. We'll maybe look at putting some sizes down because the purpose of this orthographic drawing, it didn't say this in the titles, was actually to help build up an idea of a perspective sketch. And we're going to use this full size uh, orthographic drawing to get the heights uh, accurately from the elevation end elevation projected across to the leading edge, the front edge of the, uh, the perspective drawing. Speed it up again, just using the, the Sharpie here to render in where that uh, video of his dark band is behind the, the, the glass, sorry, the acrylic, the perspex or whatever the clear plastic might be. Um, for the that's it, that little area there will also be dark, just catching the edge of that screen as it goes down. Again, looking at it to make sure we get the any detail, the holes, that side, the button, the button's in the up position at the moment, uh, so the darkness is highlighted there. So, we've got an orthographic view. Why do we do that? Well, it's a fairly clear way to, to, to see the object. We've zoomed in a little bit now, and we're going to go for the projecting across. Uh, to the uh, perspective view in a minute, but we need some sizes. Just to get us an idea of the proportion of this thing, um, and we're firing a couple of lines off the edge of the object. Sometimes, like the top view here, we've got a taper and a, a parallel section. We take two widths on that. Um, so we'll need the overall height, the overall width, and the overall thickness. So that's the information that's going to get sketched out quickly, with some dimension lines, leader lines, and the dimension lines going in at the moment. And then measuring the thing for real. In this case, we're not having to be super accurate, uh, but we will have to take measurements just from that uh, the ruler we're using at the moment. There are much more uh, detailed measuring equipment. So we're looking at the, the width there, recording that's 75. The height is 120. And the two thicknesses or depths um, are getting recorded onto the drawing at the moment. Now, unfortunately, this was set up and the camera has been slightly out of focus. It's not your eyes. We would have shown this a lot slower and more detailed had the uh, the, uh, the camera setup actually worked a little bit better. But after about an hour of work, um, it was a shame to throw this work out. So we're just putting this out on YouTube to give you a sort of flavor of this type of work. You can see from there then, we projected the heights across. Now we're going for the widths and we're taking about 10% off. So if we've got a a width of 100 would be down to 90. Uh, if we had a, a distance of 70 odd, we'd be down to 63 thereabouts. And that's going to give us a, a slight 10% drop off. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it will give you a sort of taste of the foreshortening, how sizes appear to get smaller. Obviously, they won't be the full size. You can slow down the video and check out the numbers actually used, um, provided it's in focus. But the vertical lines, you can see this rectangle, this cuboid starting to build up. And to get the lines going towards the vanishing point, a little trick here is to take the line, project it across parallel, and then pull it around a little bit further towards the vanishing point. Practice helps with that, and obviously doing freehand sketching of that type is where the confidence builds. So looking at the object, albeit slightly off screen at the moment, we've got the idea of this curved top. And... Uh, We've taken this at the moment as being the, the narrow of the two widths, uh, which is just under 30 millimetres from memory. The, the, we'll add some information at the back because the back part where the aerial is and those little hatches are actually dropped down a bit and we won't see them so clearly. So the, the, the main detail at the moment is coming from the, 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 the parallel part. Um, some detail going at the back edge there, just sneaking a little bit further in where that aerial might sit in place. Sorry the hand's in the way, but uh, you've got to draw it somehow. Um, we thought leaving it in this position would be an easier way to get you an idea of how the drawing would sit in front of you. The vertical lines are looking a little bit ropey, so again, turning the page, I think we'll maybe have a go at turning the page later on to get these a little bit more parallel. And we speed it up again, get this bottom curve. Uh, the curves for the, the front edge will cause the top left-hand corner to appear slightly shorter. And we're putting in the heights projected from the elevation onto the leading edge of the uh, 
There you go, into the leading edge of the perspective. But this is curved, so we've got to work out where that curve is going to break away and taking it around to roughly halfway where the uh, the tuning dial is going to sit on that front. Again, this is done a little bit speedier. Had it been in focus, we maybe have given you a longer video, but this is just to give a flavour of this type of drawing. The slope position for the uh, the dial, just ghosting it and just sketching it in roughly. It may move just uh, initial initial ideas. Again, this would normally be done in pencil, but it's done in ink just to make it a little bit easier for you to see um, on this type of filming. So you can see we've got the, the basic height, width and length in place. We've got the radiuses in. We're looking now at that break line. You can see it right in front of the real object uh, where that's going to sit down and where the dark area on that dial is going to sit. So we projected it along to the leading edge and then back towards the vanishing point. There's the, the dial at the band indicator, if you like, getting sketched in position. It's not super critical, these sketches, it's to give a flavour of the object. And now obviously we're going to have an awful lot of work to do if we're going to put those um, speaker uh, holes and depressions in. So we're going to leave that out in this case. A little button that appears at the the front edge and it's going to go to that in position. It's going to curve away but the button itself is straight on, it's flat on to the viewer and that back edge is just going to miss it as it goes around the corner there, feeding into that curve at the bottom. Again, all construction lines. Look at the top detail, just speeding things up a little bit. Not in real time but in the video afterwards to try and get some detail in that top corner. The vertical line flowing into the bottom corner, flowing into curve. Then we've got a break at that uh, line between the two parts, the break line. And I think now I've given in and actually going to turn the page because uh, it just isn't working having to work round the camera all the time to try and do this drawing. So there's the leading edge. It does break into that uh, speak, uh, the, the tuning dial area. And I'm not too sure about the proportions of that but we'll, we'll get a better flavour for that as it, as it develops on a little bit further. Dial in place the little recess it sits in, the position of the uh, dial, or the tuning indicator and where the, the text goes in terms of what wavelength and what frequency you're picking up on this. Detailing around the button, that's a, a selector for AM or FM on the front edge. The product itself was a £12 purchase online, it's a Sony product and in all this digital age it actually works better than some of the digital radios you can pick up at the moment. So when I saw the shape of this thing, I thought it would be ideal for a little bit of a sketching exercise. Now we've got to the top edge. You can see it's starting to firm in. Um, I'm going to speed this up a little bit again, looking at some of the detail. That brake line, how it comes round from the uh, the dial, firming in some lines, maybe moving that button over a little bit. It's just ghosting in the idea of some text. We've got the Sony, which is written rather than having some sort of um, area to it, it's just as lines, a little bit bigger drawing, we could get more detail in it. And these are just rough indicating indications of where the uh, different frequencies etc are on that uh, on that screen. So as always, uh, we tidy up, this time with uh, a Sharpie coming in. You can see the difference in the line weight, it's definitely adding a little bit more uh, prominence to those outside edges. We're not going to spend a lot of time on um, on shadow lines in this sketch. We're just really going to concentrate on that outline. Trying to be as neat as possible, making sure it just fits from straight to curve. The proper term for that is a tangent. And then this is very speeded up. Don't try it at this speed. Just that area for the, the dial. Okay, so there's the object. Slightly out of focus, I'm afraid, is the sketch behind. The plan, if you're looking from above, would sit there. Elevation, directly on top. And unfortunately, because of the camera position, you're going to see slightly two sides of this object for the end elevation. But I think that should reinforce the idea of where the orthographic view should be in a, a third angle projection. As far as the 3D drawing is concerned, it's worth just taking a second or two to see. There's the object, there's the sketch. They certainly could be improved upon, but for a first attempt, the orthographic view has helped a lot. So, 
Hope orthographic sketching like this becomes a little bit easier and enjoy your sketching.